Hi everyone, I'm Imogen from Course Report. We are a resource for researching which coding bootcamp is right for you. We have a directory of different coding schools, a blog, and interviews with founders, instructors, and students, all to help you work out which bootcamp you want to go to. Today, I'm speaking with Holburton student, Athena, who is going to tell us a bit about her background, then demo one of her favorite projects for us. She's going to share her screen with us so we can see exactly how it works and how she built it. So Athena, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Imogen, thank you for having me. So Athena, maybe we could start and you can tell me a little bit about yourself, your kind of career and education background and how your path led you to go to Holburton School. So I started at university. I was there for a couple of years and I kind of learned that lectures were really an environment where I could learn and focus very well. And then around that time, an elderly relative needed full-time care. So I decided to go and become one of his caregivers. And then after he passed away, I started looking into going back to school, but somewhere that didn't have lecture halls. That makes sense. And so what specifically made you want to um, look for a place you could learn to code? I heard of people who, um, who learn to code on their own kind of a self-study thing, and I thought about it, but I wanted a little more structure, um, but without the lecture halls. So I looked at some boot camps, and I found Holberton, and I liked Holberton because it was longer than boot camp, but shorter than a four-year program, so I felt like that was a really happy medium for me. That's awesome. Um, and what about the, I think Holberton has an income share agreement. Was that something that appealed to you as well? Oh yes, that was very appealing to me because then I didn't have to worry about loans and debt. It felt like the school was invested in my success because I only had to pay after I got a job that paid above a certain threshold. Yeah, that's so cool that they have that option. And so once you decided that Holburton was the school for you, what was the application and interview process like? Um, like how, how did you manage in that process? Well, it um, started with a short little form about myself, the usual registration information. And then there was a short quiz on some technical questions. And um, it was absolutely acceptable and encouraged for me to Google the answers online as someone who came from a non-technical background. It was kind of a test to see if you could find the answers on your own. And then after that, there was a uh, project where you build a simple website. And after that, um, there was a blog post that I had to write, kind of about why I wanted to go to Holberton School. And last part was a on-site Q&A where um, the head of admissions kind of talked us through the program and made sure that it was a good fit for us. That's awesome. How did you find that um, the, the test and the project in that application process? Was it difficult? No, it wasn't very difficult. It was just a lot of Googling because I didn't know any of the answers, but it wasn't hard to find the answers. Well, well done for getting through that and getting accepted to the program. Yeah, thank you. So once you started at Holberton School, once you got to the classroom, can you tell me a bit about your cohort there, how many people were in it, and, and how diverse it was? Oh, well, we don't really have classrooms here. We have a really great campus, a lot of collaborative spaces. It was kind of one of the things that cemented um, my decision in just staying in this program. And I, my cohort is also very diverse in terms of just our backgrounds as well as age. Um, some of us just came straight out of high school. Some of us have had some college. Some people have finished uh, and gotten degrees in linguistics, philosophy, mechanic engineering. So it was a really diverse cohort. Um, everyone came here with a different story. And I feel like our stories kind of um, help us solve problems in different ways, which is um, very helpful in the peer learning aspect. That's awesome. Wow, that's such a, a big range of backgrounds. That's so cool. 
And so what was the actual learning experience like at Holberton School? Like maybe you can tell me a little bit about a typical day and, and the sort of learning style. So um, a typical day would be, you know, I would log into the school intranet and see what project I had open. And then I would kind of look at the project uh, concepts that I was supposed to learn. And sometimes there would be some resources linked there and I would go and read through them. Sometimes if those didn't help me very much or if I needed a little more clarity on certain things, I would go and Google for more resources to read. And then when I felt like I had kind of gotten the idea, I would start doing the task on each project. And that was kind of um, practicing what I learned right away. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, and so what sort of projects have you been working on at, at Holbert and other than the one you're about to show me? Um, so the projects at Holbert and Rain um, cover a lot of things. So we started with low level programming. Um, that was kind of where I learned my first programming language. And then we study things like data structures, um, a lot of uh, very important computer science concepts like uh, structures and strings and memory allocation. So we work, uh, worked on a lot of uh, coding challenge type of projects. Um, if people are familiar with leak code, we worked on a lot of small functions that did one thing, which kind of helped us practice um, concepts like memory allocation or different kinds of data structures and data types. And we also built um, one of the big projects of the whole Burn curriculum is building a clone of Airbnb. So we learned how to build a web application from back end to front end. Very cool. So yeah, I, if, if you're ready, it would be great if you could um, share your screen and, and tell me about your favorite project that you worked on at Holberton. The reason why I made this project is because I'm a huge introvert and I'm not too great at face-to-face -face interactions. Um, I'm far better at just kind of interacting with people online. So one of the places I go to for this kind of um, interaction and community is Facebook groups. There's groups for all kinds of hobbies and interests, as well as just kind of weird things out there. And one time I stumbled on a group called a group where you can only say egg, um, like EGG egg. And I was like, wow, what a weird concept. I got to join this group. So I joined it and everyone is just posting the word egg. Um, it's, sometimes it looks like a greeting, but if people post it more than one egg, it felt like maybe they were trying to tell some kind of story, but I had no way of knowing because it was just egg. So I felt like, what if there was some kind of egg translation service that were great? So I came to Holberton and I learned how to build a web app from back end to front end. And I thought, why wait for someone else to do that? Why don't I take initiative and build this myself? So that's kind of my idea behind this project. And now I'm gonna show you I'm excited to see. So you can find this project deployed at eggventure.online. And this is what it looks like. Um, here's the logo. And this is a little theme toggle. You can see that it looks kind of like an egg. And this is the form that you fill out for um, putting in your words. And down here, I have some instructions and a video for people who don't know how to use it. And then this theme toggle, you can see I can make it a dark theme for people who like dark theme. I'm one of those people. And then here is where users can put in what they want to share with the group. Um, this is where they put words that are not egg. And a good example to put in here, um, I have it right here. I'm going to put in some, some code from a past project. So I just want to demonstrate how, um, how my web app will just substitute each word in here with the word egg um, and the formatting and everything else, like the other characters and punctuation marks stay the same. 
So you can see here that there's supposed to be like tab characters here. Um, they will remain. All of these uh, new lines here, they will also remain. Only the words will be substituted by egg. And also someone suggested to me that I um, substitute each digit with a zero to make it more egg-like. So I've also implemented that. And down here, I have a drop-down menu where you can select the output language. So you can choose what language you want your eggs to be in. And uh, we'll just go with English. And I'll press the button. There we go. All right, so now you can see that everything has turned into egg. Um, wow. the number, yeah, the numbers are zero. You can see all of the new lines and the tabs are still in place. Um, and then down, and then here is a button for copy, for capturing everything in this text box um, so that you can easily copy this and paste it into the egg group. Um, and then here is a link um, where you can share along with the egg to the group. For people who aren't fluent in egg, they can use this link to go and see your original input. Um, so if I open a new tab and paste that link in there, you can see that this was my original input. That's awesome. <laughs> so what happens if you change the language? Does it does it say egg in another language or? Uh, yes, it does. Oh, um, cool. If I were to do that again and change a different language. Okay, there we go. So you can see here the input language. I only have English right now. This is, um, this is something I'm gonna work on in the future. Uh, right now, uh, the output language, let's say we can choose um, French. So it would do the same thing that you saw, but it will be egg in French. So it will say oof. Oh, there we go, yeah, it works. Yay, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, and then um, something you may have noticed is when I changed the theme to the dark theme earlier, you see how when the page changed, um, we're still using a dark theme. So um, this was something that I had to implement because at first um, I didn't write the JavaScript part of the site correctly and it would always default back to the light color theme. So this was something that took me a few days to get it working properly. Nice one. Yeah, it looks great. So how did you decide what languages or technologies to use to build this project? So since I learned everything I know about coding at Hoboken, I really wanted to practice what I learned. So I mainly stuck with what I used at Hoboken, but I also wanted to challenge myself. So mostly I stuck with Hoboken technologies, but I chose to use a different web framework, Django. Cool. And so what were the technologies that you used that Holberton had, had taught you about? Uh, so Holberton taught me to use, uh, I used MySQL database for storing the user's input so that when you use the link, you can query the database and it will show you the original text. Um, I used it just plain HTML, CSS, and a bit of JavaScript. I didn't use any web frame. I didn't use any front end frameworks, so that's why you can see it looks very simple. I also worked in a virtual machine. I knew my project was going to be going to be deployed on a Linux server. So I worked in a Linux virtual machine for developing this project. Um, throughout the entire whole Burton curriculum, we worked in Linux machines. That's so cool. And so you were mentioning that you used, was it some Django that you used that you hadn't that you hadn't um, learned before. How did you teach yourself to use that? So every time we learned to use Flask framework and I heard that Django was built off Flask so I knew it was kind of similar concepts. I just had to use a different tool. So I looked at a few tutorials online and I kind of followed along to see how to build a Django app and then I did that on my own and 
it was way easier than using Flask. That's great. That's so cool. So how long in total did it take you to build this project? So for this project, we were given a deadline of two weeks and it took me about a week of reading documentation and just kind of planning out what exactly my project was going to do um, and how it was going to look. And then it took me like around a week just to put everything together. That's awesome. Um, and what would you say is the biggest challenge you had while building the project? So one of the biggest um, one of the biggest challenges for this project was I didn't really think about how to format the text when after I turned everything into egg I didn't one of the challenges um, of this project was getting the output text to be formatted correctly um, I didn't do too much HTML here, so I forgot that HTML didn't care about your new lines and your tab characters. So at first, um, my output text was just all on one line, and that was not what I wanted. So I sat and thought about it, and I decided to put everything in a text box, which you can see now, and it just kind of retains the formatting of um, the user. That's awesome. Well done for figuring that out. That's so cool. Thank you. And then um, if, if, you could, if you could do it again, is there anything that you'd want to do differently or change or upgrade? Well, if I can do it differently this time, um, I would probably use a different database. Um, I felt like only choosing to use one new technology was a little kind of underestimating myself. I definitely could have pushed myself to try something more challenging than just one new thing. If that makes sense. And then what are your plans for the future of the project? Are you gonna keep working on it? Do you think you're gonna share it with your, um, your Facebook page or anything like that? Oh, yes. Um, one of the, things that are most important to me is to try to make my site as accessible as possible. I want everyone or as many people as possible to be able to enjoy a web application. Um, I also want to make this into a single page application very similar to Google Translate. It would be really helpful to be able to see your input and your output just all in one page. And also I want to implement users so that you can kind of have a history of everything that you've turned into egg. That would be really, um, really help to people. That's awesome. And, and have you been able to show your app to the other people in your Facebook page? Um, I didn't share it with the whole group. I just shared it with a few people because I'm, I'm a little shy. Yeah. But what did they think? Um, they like it. They, they thought it was a great idea. It's really not um, something they've seen before. Um, before I made this project, I did a little research. I didn't see anything like this out there. So I knew that it was, it was something that it was a new idea. Yeah, it's super cool. That's awesome. Overall, in terms of your career, your future career, how important is it do you think that you were able to work on a project like this at Holbert School? Well, I think it was uh, very important that I was able to work on this because I was only given a deadline and I had to design a project on my own and I had to plan it and think about the scope. I didn't, I couldn't um, try to make a project that was too big. I didn't want to make a project that was too small and underwhelming. So having to consider all of this and learn a new framework and have something functioning within the deadline, um, it was a great experience and it kind of proved that I can make something from start to functional. That's awesome. Cool. And I just have, I just have two or three more questions for you, um, but you can stop sharing your screen if you like. So how is Holburton kind of preparing you for, for your next steps in your career? Like, are they giving you job advice, career advice, anything like that? So throughout the foundation's curriculum and also right now, uh, we've been practicing with mock interviews. And then 
we've had some resume workshops where some guests were invited to come and look over our resumes and give us some really great feedback. Uh, we have mentors coming in, giving us workshops. Just this week, we had someone come in and tell us about how to negotiate salary and other intangibles for a job. Uh, we also have a student success manager who is developing some career sprint curriculum. And the curriculum involves uh, how to build a portfolio, um, the different process, the different steps in getting a job and how to prepare for each step and also technical concepts that we should practice and review for technical interviews. Oh, awesome. That sounds great. Um, and so how much longer do you have left of the course and what are your plans when you graduate? Um, I've finished the foundations curriculum. So now I'm in the career sprint portion, which is um, where students are actively seeking jobs. And right now my priority is getting a job. And is there any specific type of job that you'd like to get? Any specific industries or roles that you'd like? Um, I'm pretty open to whatever opportunities there are out there but I'm mainly focusing on back-end developer positions because that's what I'm most comfortable doing for now. Awesome, well, good luck. I hope you, hope you find an awesome one. Oh, thank you. And then um, just lastly, what's your advice to other people who are thinking about doing an intensive coding program like Holberton School? Um, definitely, I would say do your research and give it a try. If a school has a trial period, like Holperton does, definitely do the trial period, see if it's the right fit. Awesome. And then any advice specifically about building projects at, at, a, at a coding program? So think about uh, how much time you have and aim for being able to complete the project within, in half of that time, and the other half of that time should be spent doing research and also debugging and just making sure everything runs as it's supposed to because things are all to happen that you didn't expect. Oh, that's really wise advice. Thank you. Thank cool. You. Well, that's all of my questions now. So thank you so much, Athena, for, for, for chatting with me and showing me your project. It looks awesome. Um, I think you're going to have a great career ahead of you. So good luck with your job hunting. And yeah, this has been great. Thank you so much, Imogen.